Hi everybody, I'm Dr. McFarland, a board certified pediatric dentist and mom of three. I'm active on social media and I get the question a lot about the kids ages two plus that parents see on toothpaste. And they're going to buy fluoridated toothpaste like Hello, like Tasty Paste, two ones with great flavors for kids that I really recommend. But they go to buy these and it's for their baby because the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry does recommend that a child use a grain of rice sized amount of fluoride toothpaste from the time their first tooth comes in around six months of age until they turn three, at which time you would switch to a pea sized amount of fluoride toothpaste. I can show you some images of what those amounts look like here. But they hear that recommendation, grain of rice sized amount of fluoride toothpaste, they go to pick up fluoride toothpaste and then they're gonna freak out because they see, wait, it says age is two plus and so they don't buy it. They'll get something like a training paste. So why do companies do this? If we know that the recommendation of the AAPD is age two and under uses a grain of rice size amount. Well, this recommendation actually changed in 2014. So the policy on the use of fluoride was updated in 2014 to include now children age two and under using fluoride toothpaste. Before that, it was that children aged zero to two did not use fluoridated toothpaste. That wasn't the recommendation. But what they found was that children in that age group were getting cavities. And often when young children get cavities, it is more severe because it's more difficult to manage. And if they do develop severe disease, they've got to undergo many times something like general anesthesia in order for those cavities to be treated. So the risk benefit of fluorosis, so dental fluorosis is the risk of getting too much fluoride when too young and the child is too small versus that risk of cavities. And so preventing cavities. You're balancing those two things, preventing cavities and dental fluorosis. Dental fluorosis happens in the forming permanent teeth. Our permanent teeth are starting to form around birth. So the six-year molars around birth and then on to the incisors and then on back as we get a little bit older. So from zero to three, especially that's when a lot of the crowns are forming of those permanent teeth. And if you get too much fluoride ingested, you can get something called fluorosis where you get little white flecking in the enamel. It actually makes the enamel more resistant to cavities. Mild fluorosis is an aesthetically maybe not ideal thing, although most people don't notice it. I have it, but it dramatically decreases your cavity risk. I never had a cavity until my third pregnancy and a bad coffee habit. The worry is more than that, you get to moderate or severe fluorosis with people who have like contaminated well water. You'll see studies out of China where we first discovered the benefit of fluoride, well water in Colorado, places with naturally way too high amounts of fluoride that people are ingesting in their water, getting huge amounts of it. You can get severe fluorosis that weakens the enamel. You get brown spots. That's what we want to avoid, but that is not a risk with the recommended amounts. That's why they recommend the amounts they do in our water and in our toothpaste. You are not going to get severe fluorosis fluorosis from just those things. And what your dentist is going to do, because you've established a dental home by your child's first birthday, also an AAPD recommendation, get your child to the dentist early so that they can guide you based on your unique family situation, where you live. They can have you test your well water for the amount of fluoride if you live in a mountainous region. They're going to look at overall fluoride exposure and then decide what amount of toothpaste you should use, fluoride supplements you should receive, and any number of things. So we're trying to help you maximize the cavity preventive effect and minimize the risk of dental fluorosis happening. That's why the AAPD changed the recommendation in 2014 to be a grain of rice size amount of fluoride toothpaste. So what I think has happened is these companies are still, you know, almost a decade behind. And so they remember that old recommendation, but they do say on the back and you can see in some B-roll, they say under age two, consult a dentist or a doctor. So they're not saying don't use it. They're just kind of CYA like, well, if you're going to use it, be sure to ask someone. But this I do think is misleading age two plus because absolutely kids under age two can use it. They just have to use the appropriate recommended amounts. And if I'm being a little cynical, it may also be that they're hoping that you'll buy another product, which would be something like a training toothpaste, which if you've seen some of my other content, I don't advocate for a training paste. You really don't need it. Before a child has teeth, you just use a damp washcloth to clean out their mouth. You don't even have to use one of those silicone finger brushes, but you can. And then as soon as they get teeth, you want to use a nylon toothbrush with bristles, my favorite too, or a triple sided toothbrush like Surround or this one's Frida Baby or Oral B's zero to three. Love these guys. So a true bristled toothbrush and fluoride toothpaste in a grain of rice size amount. If you got more questions, let me know in the comments. If this was helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and you can check out the video YouTube wants you to see next.